Okay. Hi, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is Hot Topic for February 26th of 2018. And our topic tonight is helping your new team member start successfully. So this training topic runs about 20 minutes and it really is even, it's for the brand new consultant with Touchstone Crystal, um, all the way up to seasoned professionals who are wanting to find a way to streamline um, some of the, the structure around how do I help a new consultant start successfully? And, you know, it, it would be great if, if we were dealing with robots, right? Because then we would have just a really simple system. Every single person would be responding in exactly the same way, but it's never that. And so I want to, I want to dive in with that caveat that no matter what you do, there will always be a different response because we're talking about human beings with lots of different goals and, and skill sets and um, plans. That would be normal. But what I want to do is try to give you some things to think about, to demystify and to take away some of the fears that a lot of us have about helping a new consultant to get started. When I talk to new team members, I hear them mostly say, there's no way I'm ready to sponsor anybody. I hardly know enough myself. And what I want to say to you is, you knew enough to sign up, right? Therefore, you know enough to help somebody else sign up, and the re we will help you do the rest because that's our privilege is to help you. But in the meantime, we can give you a few little tools to make you more confident in, in offering the business to people. So what I want to do is, um, is encourage you to involve your upline and your leader, your upline leader, in any conversations that you start to have that are somewhat significant with potential team members. So let's pretend that you decide that you're going to bite the bullet and you're going to um, suspend disbelief and start talking to people about the business, even if you're brand new. Um, and I, I'm going to trust that that Betsy girl isn't kidding and that they're going to have my back and that when somebody says that they're curious that somebody's going to catch me when I fall. Okay. And, and in fact, we absolutely will. And we're delighted to do that because that's, that's the fun of this. So what I want to do is, is, is give you some really good nuts and bolts of the kinds of things that you'll be thinking about and talking about and the tools that you'll be using to make this as simple as possible. Now, remember, this is, we're, we're dealing with human beings here. And so it's going to all look different. But if you can keep some framework in mind, it's going to make it easier for you. So let's pretend you have, you're talking to Mary. And Mary, all of a sudden, at a party with you, says, oh, you know what? I've really been looking for something to do. And, you know, I love this jewelry. Maybe I should do this, too. And you're going, oh, no. <laughs> now what do I do? I, no, I, I need to tell her no because I, I don't know what to say to her, and I'm just going to run away, right? That would be the normal response for a brand-new consultant. But what I want you to do is stop and think, this is not about me. This is about her. Anytime we help a new team member into the company, it's not about me at all. In fact, I want to forget about myself completely and I want to focus on her. And so what does that mean? First of all, is when someone says to you, I'm thinking about maybe that I would be interested in doing what you do. Um, avoid the tendency to start throwing up all over that person and saying, oh, you know, what? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I never thought that I would ever sponsor anybody. And you know, we can go to conference together and Glam Jam is so much fun. I can't wait to get there. And then, you know, maybe we can even do a set up trip together. Alaska is great in September. And can you imagine how much fun we'll have? I'll come to your lunch party. I mean, meanwhile, she's going, wacko, running away. Instead, what if you turn it around? Remember, it's not about us. It's about her or him. What if we, Steve, forgive me, if, if, if I don't use the, the both, <laughs> you'll understand my point. I know, I know you're gracious. Um, ask him or her good questions. So, well, Mary, I'm, I'm so excited to hear you say that. Tell me why. Why would you be interested in this business? What would be fun about this for you? What attracts you to this? However you want to ask it, right? So figure out a way to get him or her talking to you about why the interest. Maybe you're the one that brought it up in the first place. But regardless of how it came up, if that person is saying to you, I actually am kind of a little bit curious. Great. Tell me why before you say anything else. Okay. Tell me why. 
How could you see it benefiting you? Because here's why. If you can get her talking about why this would be fun for her and helpful for her, she will start talking herself into this far better than any of us ever could. Because when we're trying to talk somebody into something, it's not going to be the best thing for them. When they're talking themselves into it, it's far, far better, right? And it's a whole lot easier for all of us. So you want to ask as many questions as you can without being, you know, super nosy. If they say, I really need to make some money, it's okay to say, well, how much money are we talking about? It's okay to ask that question. That's not too personal. That's, that's a business question. So what we're trying to do, what I want you to do is strike a tone that is simply a business conversation. You're simply conversing with this person. You have no need to persuade her of anything. You simply want to help her figure out if this is right for her by asking her good questions. And then the next thing is, now that you've gotten to know what her goals are, you're going to show her what's possible using um, things like the Ready, Set, Glam Guide, which shows some income possibilities. I actually take a Ready, Set, Glam Guide with me to every party now. Can you believe that? Yeah, I know. And oh, and Shell. <laughs> so Shell Stanton, thank God for Shell. She's been with us for six years. And Shell suggested to the home office, can we please be able to purchase the Ready, Set, Glam Guide? Yay, and now we can. Gay Shell. So we can now actually order them uh, under business supply. And I'm so thankful because that is a great tool to take oh. with us to, um, to a party as a, as a piece of reference material. I actually give it out. When I, when I have somebody who's truly interested in the business, I give it to her because I want her to see what's possible. I want her to see the support that she gets. And I open it up and I show her some of the income potentials. So then I want to show her how that translates to the glam plan. So at every party, I have a Ready, Set, Glam guide. I have several copies of the basic starter kit. I have several copies of the new glam plan with me. And I show them, here's what's amazing about this. For $99 this month, you can get started, plus shipping and tax. And you can get all this free jewelry. And so I know your goal is to make $500 a month. I mean, and this, this could be a five-minute conversation really fast. But using the glam plan shower, all this free jewelry that she can get just by doing the parties that she's going to want to do anyway to make that $500 in income in her first month in business. So use the Ready, Set, Glam guide. Use the glam plan and use the starter kit. Print those things off and have them with you at parties, at vendor events. Keep them with you in, in a little business folder or something that you take around with you. So as, as you bump into people, you have that with you to, as a good resource. All of those things are available on, in digitally, and then you can also print them out. Um, okay, number three was use the Ready, Set, Glam guide. Now, so then the Ready, Set, Glam guide, so once that person says that they're ready to dive in and get going, um, you want to use that Ready, Set, Glam guide as the Sparkle Bible. So here's what's happened. Before she even signs up, if you can help her to identify the things that she will want to do before, once she gets going, then you've given her a strategy. One of the most painful things for me, and, and I still end up doing it sometimes, but this, there, I just have this, this visceral response to this scenario where somebody says, okay, I'm ready to go, and I'm going to sign up today, and then when I get my kit, we can talk about what I'm going to do. I'm like, ah, no, because I so want to have a strategy in place with her by the time she signs up. And if not by the time she signs up, like she catches me unawares and that happens to me all the time. Trust me. Like, Oh wait, I didn't know you were ready yet. But if I can catch her even before she gets her starter kit, and I get that launch party on her calendar and I help her invite those people to her launch party, then I've done something because if I've waited till when she gets that starter kit and then she's going, well, just let, let me let it breathe a little. I gotta, I gotta feel the jewelry. And then maybe I'll, I'll think about planning a launch party sometime soon because I gotta, you know, test the waters. I'm like, ah, you're killing me. No, because it's not going to help her to be successful. And I'll say to her, because remember we're dealing with human beings. I'll say to her, 
you are totally welcome to do it that way. But successful start would look, a, a truly successful start would probably look different from that. And it would probably involve us both working on your launch party right now rather than waiting. Would you be willing to consider letting me help you put a launch party date on the calendar while your jewelry is breathing and, <laughs> and your friends are getting used to this whole idea? Would you let me help you? Would you consider letting me help you? So you want to find a way to gently pull her into what you know is going to serve her best, which is a launch party and a couple more parties on her calendar right away. So, and you say to yourself, well, but she just wants to be a hobbyist. She just wants to do one party every now and again. So I don't want to push her. I totally understand that. And I love that. I love that about you. If that's what you're saying, because you don't want to push her. There's a difference between pushing somebody and showing her what's possible. So what if instead of pushing her, we found a way to say to her, I understand that your goal is to do one party a month so that you can have a ton of fun. But let me set a scenario for you. What if you go out and do that one party a month and you feel like you're reinventing the wheel every single time and you can't remember how to plug in orders every single time or how to set up your jewelry every single time because every time there's a whole month between it and you never learn how to do it. Wouldn't it feel better to do it several times right in a row and get really good at it. And then that one party a month would be a great one and you would have the success that you're looking for. Wouldn't that feel better to you? And see what she says. Because if we don't talk about it with her, I mean, she can still say no. Nope, I don't wanna do that. And then you know what you're dealing with, right? Which is, she's gonna have a hard time. This is gonna be hard. Every time she goes out and does that one party a month, it's gonna be hard for her. And she can always go backwards and start all over again, not with the clan plan, but you know, doing several parties right in a row to learn how to do this. Um, but we want her to understand that the glam plan is there for rewards and it's there for training because we want her to feel confident, successful, like she knows what she's doing at a party, before the party, during the party, after the party. Only way to do it is on the job training. The glam plan simply hang, hangs the carrots and dangles them in front of people to help them to remember to do that, to incentivize them to do that. Okay, so what you'll want to do, so let's say she's amenable to all of this. She's like, okay, tell me what to do. I'm all ears. You say, great, launch party. Let's focus you on a $1,000 launch party. That's the, I mean, seriously, that's the best first thing that you can do to help her, is help her pick a date, Help her create that guest list of 35 to 40 friends from different circles. I had a gal that I was talking with recently who um, said, okay, I've got my launch party all figured out and I'm inviting about, I said, great, who are you inviting? We were doing a Zoom. Who are you inviting? I'm inviting about 12 of my best friends and family. And I went, okay. She said, what? I said, well, would you consider another option if I gave you one? <laughs> and then I explained to her that sometimes friends and family are not the best help when it comes to starting a business. She said, you know what? Now that you mention it, I think you're probably right. They probably won't be my best help. The ones that are in my best, you know, my, my best friends and my family, they're probably not going to be a whole lot of help. I said, so how about if we try another way? And I got her to buy into the idea of 35 to 40 friends, different circles, that kind of thing. We have to basically host coach her as if she was a hostess, right, for her own launch party. And this is how she learns how to host coach her other hostesses. At the same time that we're working with her as a hostess of her own launch party, although she's already a consultant, we're also talking with her about who wants to offer a party to. It's very tempting to say, okay, let's just do your, let's get to your launch party. We're going to book all your parties from your launch party. Um, you can do that, but that's not going to be starting her off successfully. If there's any way to do it, if you can get her to buy in, if you can get her 
to agree to this. The best thing for her is actually to book a couple other parties before her launch party even happens. Think about the scenario. She gets to her, two, so, and you can give her these two scenarios. One is, so Mary, let's, let's think about it. We, we do your launch party and you've got, you know, eight or 10 friends there, two people book a party. Yay, it's a win, it's a thousand dollar party and we're so excited. Those two parties are not until April and it's February. So those two parties are not until April. How are you gonna feel about that? Ooh, I'm gonna wonder what, what I'm gonna do with my March. Well, right, what would you do with your March? So let's talk about another strategy. What if, in addition to inviting all these people to your launch party, we're also working at the same time on finding a couple of other hostesses to book their parties right after your launch. We get them all lined up. We're hostess coaching them. We're getting their guest lists in order. We're getting their invitations out. And their parties are taking place right after your launch. How would you feel about that? So think about it so that you'd be at your launch party, you'd be booking those other two parties for April, but you already know that you've got two more parties coming up over the next week or two. Wouldn't that feel good? Wouldn't that feel like you've got a business in place? Like you're gonna get the training that you really want all right in a row and learn how to do this really well. So the key is not to say you have to do this, 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 this. It's to help her to understand the benefits to doing it that way and to help her think about the ramifications if she does it a different way. And she's welcome to do it any way she wants. Totally up to her. But we want to partner in these decisions about how she's doing this. Now, I'm, you know, and, and I'm giving you a lot of, you know, some of it's kind of pie in the sky. It's like the, the gold standard of, of how we would do this. And some of you are going, well, I didn't get to start that way. Well, it, maybe you're, it might be that your sponsor tried to start you that way. I don't know. <laughs> and her leader too. We don't know that. Sometimes when we are brand new, we don't hear things the same way as the person who's been, who's communicating with us. And so, you know, give people gracious, um, grace and, you know, leeway. <laughs> and don't start judging the ones who brought you in either based on what I'm sharing with you. <laughs> That's why this is always a hard topic for me to train on because I'm like, don't start judging your upline because <laughs> you were the new person and maybe you weren't listening. <laughs> it's quite possible. <laughs> or maybe she's learned a lot since then too. I mean, we're all in progress here, right? We're all in progress. Okay. So how do you help her get a few more, a few parties on her calendar? Right, Shell? I know. Um, so, we, so, so what if she's given you, she or he has given you the go ahead to help get a couple parties on the calendar. You're like, Oh my gosh, it's hard enough for me to get parties. How am I going to help her get, get parties? Well, think about it. It's a matter of a contact list, right? Who's she going to offer it to? It's not magic. It's who, who she's, who's she going to reach out to? What words will she use, right? How is she going to reach out? Is it texting or Facebook or you know, whatever? Um, the frequency, make sure you send it a second time. Give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, what to say in response. You know, what do they say when they get a response back? It's the same stuff that, that we do when we're trying to book a party, right? Um, and we're helping her to do the same thing. It's never an exact science. It is the single least rewarding and single most frustrating part of any direct selling business is booking parties. That's just normal. The rest of it's easy, right? This is normal, but if we can partner with it, it gets a whole lot easier. And the really funny thing is that when you're partnering with a new team member about booking parties, it will up your game. You're gonna get better booking parties yourself. It's just the way it works. You're going to get smarter and what you're going to get wiser, faster, more resilient because you're helping somebody else do what it is that you're also working on doing. Now you don't want to say to her, Oh my God, it's so hard to book a party. I mean, come on, really? It's not hard to book a party. It takes tenacity. It just depends on how you look at it and, and how you frame it for yourself will determine whether you're successful and how you frame it for her or him will determine whether he or she is successful unless they're highly unusual and they're listening to you anyway, and they're just going to do what they're going to do. So um, I want to encourage you to dive in and partner with that person. Now, if you're brand new, 
you don't have to do this on your own. Your upline leader actually, so you're a part of your upline leader's central group. A central group is like a, it's just a term that we use to mean that if you're not a leader yet, you're in her central group. You, she, you are, you are her responsibility. And the really cool thing is that anybody that you bring in is her responsibility as well. And when I say responsibility, I, I, I use that in, in kind of a loose way. Um, privilege really is what it is for us to get to work with new team members that you bring in. So if you're not a leader yet, your upline leader, I'm telling you right now, sees it as a privilege to partner with you and her to help her get started successfully. So I don't want you to feel like you're on your own. I want you to be empowered to do this well on your own and to not be afraid to talk to people about the business for fear of not knowing what you're going to say. Okay. So I'm going to stop right there because seriously, if you can do those things, these people will start successfully. They really will. And um, this is not hard. It's not hard. It's about building a friendship with her, finding out what it is that she or he wants to do with their business, help them to see the benefit of using the GLAM plan and the Ready, Set, GLAM guide to get them started and work with them, partner with them to build a launch party and um, a, a, a quick party calendar that works for them to get started successfully. That's it. That, that's really all there is to it. And when you get stumped and when there are other things that pop up, or when she goes AWOL, or when she goes faster than you do. Yay, we love it when that happens. Like she's the barn burner and she goes crazy and books 10 parties. We love when that happens. Then, you know, work with your upline leader on that because that's exactly what um, he or she is there for. Okay, we have got um, five minutes before we're gonna clear the decks. And I'm gonna stop the recording right now so I don't forget later.